short term finance and current liabilities management spontaneous liabilities are financing that arises from the normal course of business so you have to remember this phrase normal course of business that means when the business increases the liabilities also increase and when the business decreases liabilities also decrease so uh, there are two main sources of uh, spontaneous liabilities one is the accounts payable and another one is accrual actually the liabilities are uh, another source of short term financing so we can say that uh, whenever we need we actually can finance from accounts payable and accruals you know that accounts payable are the amounts that are due to the other party like supplier so until you repay your supplier you can use the supplier's fund for your business uh, similarly you can use the fund of accrual until it is paid for your business purpose this is why we are saying that these are the two major sources of short term financing and uh, actually you know you can use these two sources for interest free short term financing that is very interesting i think you know that accounts payable result from transactions in which merchandise is purchased on credit purchased on credit as i have said and normally uh, the 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 amount of short term financing will depend on the uh, length of the period you are taking for repaying your money so the average payment period is the key word here so the longer the average payment period the longer will be the period of your short term financing so the average payment period has two parts one is the time from the purchase of raw materials until the firm mails the payment uh, if you want to pay by check then of course you will have to mail the check so that is the duration of time first part of the total duration of time and the second part is the payment float time which is the time it takes after the firm mails its payment until the supplier has withdrawn the fund because after you have sent the check um, the the supplier may take a longer time uh, to uh, collect the fund from your account from the uh, from from the payer's account so if they take a longer period of time then you can use uh, their money for a longer period of time so if you want to uh, of course as a business person you will always be happy if the average payment period is longer so uh, you can actually lend them uh, any or both of these two parts of the average payment period and be careful that in increasing these two floats uh, you should not uh, actually uh, you know have any negative impact on your uh, credibility with the supplier now let us talk about uh, accounts payable management this is the management of the firm uh, for uh, about uh, about the time that elapses between the purchase of raw materials and its mailing payment to the supplier okay, this is this is under your control you cannot control when the supplier will withdraw the money but you can control uh, the time period that you take um, between uh, uh, between your purchase and uh, mailing the uh, check so uh, normally you will try to increase this period to allow the interest free loan from the supplier but remember that it is not always interest free later on we will discuss about that sometimes the suppliers will impose some condition and uh, when you fulfill that condition you will have some days interest free but if you take more than that it will be costly let us give uh, an example uh, in 2013 brown forman corporation we can call it bf in short um, this is the manufacturer of beverage brands they had uh, annual revenues of 3.8 billion 3.8 billion of annual revenue cost of revenue is 1.8 billion that is actually the cost of goods sold and accounts payable of 468 million you know that accounts payables are taken from the balance sheet average age of inventory of 168 days so this is the length of time the company takes to process the inventory 
to convert the inventory and Everest collection period of 55 days this is the length of period the company takes to collect accounts receivable from uh, from the customers and the Everest payment period is 136 days. So, this is the length of period the company takes to pay its suppliers and the purchase uh, purchases were 1.3 billion okay that is the amount of purchase and you know that you can get the total figure from uh, from the uh, from the income statement and the cash conversion cycle was 87 days which is actually uh, you can get it very easily uh, cash conversion cycle is equals to uh, average age of inventory plus average collection period minus average payment period so essentially this is uh, 168 days plus 55 days minus 136 days will which will be equal to 87 days. Uh, now, if we want to calculate the uh, calculate the resources invested in the operations of this uh, of this cash conversion during this cash conversion cycle period, we can we have to calculate the resources invested in inventory for the 168 days of uh, inventory processing time the amount of resources invested for accounts receivable we, uh, for the 55 days and also uh, the amount of uh, the suppliers fund the company could use in the form of accounts payable for 136 days. This is not very difficult as you can remember that the inventory was inventory actually is the cost of revenue. Uh, you, you can use it as the inventory. So, that is 1.8 billion for the whole year uh, that means for the 365 days. So, if you divide 1.8 billion by 365 you get the amount of inventory per day and then if you multiply by the 168 days which is the average number of days inventory uh, remains with the company then you will get how much money is engaged with inventory. Okay, that is 0 0.83 billion uh, during one cycle, one cycle of uh, inventory processing. Similarly, you can uh, calculate uh, the accounts receivable. Actually, you will have to take the uh, revenue assuming that all the sales revenues are coming out of uh, credit cell. We can, we can say that 3.8 billion is the, is the total accounts receivable of the year for 365 days. So, again similarly you can divide 3.8 billion by 365 to get the daily average accounts receivable then you can multiply by 55 which is actually the average collection period. So, so that you know how much money is engaged with accounts receivable uh, that stays with the customer during one cycle of operation. So, these two are the cash engagements. So, you have to add these two. Okay. Now, what you will have to do? You will have to deduct the amount of money that you keep, uh, the amount of the supplier's money that you keep for this 136 days. As you can see, we have said that the average payment period was 136 days. So, this is the duration when you keep your supplier's money with you. So, we, we can see that our purchases were 1.3 billion during the year during the 365 day period. So, in 365 days of period you had 1.3 billion dollar of purchase uh, on credit uh, assuming that all are on credit. But remember when you are doing your job in a real company you should you should of course calculate the exact amount of credit purchase you know do not use the total purchase here. Similarly, you should not use the total uh, revenue uh, here uh, when you estimate the amount res uh, resources engaged with accounts receivable rather you should estimate what is the credit sell during the year. Okay. So, let us come back to accounts payable. So, the total accounts payable during the year was 1.3 billion from here um, you can find the daily accounts payable by dividing it by 365 days and then multiplying it by 136 you get the you get the uh, amount of accounts payable during the average payment uh, period of 136 days. So, you get it 
0.48 billion. So, if you deduct this 0.48 billion from the sum of these two, then you get 0.92 billion dollar which is the resources which is the amount of resources invested with the cash conversion cycle. Now, uh, let us let us let us do some more analysis with this amount. So, based on the company's APP that means average payment period and and the average accounts payable, the daily accounts payable generated by this company is about 3.5 million. Okay, how do you get that? Because you know 0.48 billion, this is the amount, 0.48 billion is the amount of resources uh, coming out of the suppliers during the 136 day day. Okay, so if you if you divide it by 136 days, then you can find that for every day, okay, every day, every day you 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 get 3.5 million dollar of accounts payable, okay, from the suppliers as a short term financing. Now let us talk about the other amount. Okay, now now let us think about a situation if your company can successfully if your company can successfully um, increase the average payment period by 5 days which is desirable you know uh, if the company can increase the average payment period then uh, it will help the company to uh, to keep the suppliers money for 5 more days so if you multiply these 5 days with this 3.5 million dollar okay then you will get how much uh, you know accounts payable will increase okay that is 17.5 million so if we go back here uh, here you know here instead of 0 0.48 billion it will be it will be 0 0.48 billion plus as a result of delaying the accounts payable, you will have additional 17.5 million. So, uh, 17.5 million. Okay, so this is billion. This is million. So you will get more, uh, more of the suppliers' fund available for your business use, uh, and that is good for your business, isn't it? So ultimately, what will happen? You know that if you if you can increase the average payment period by five days, then your cash conversion cycle will be shorter. Will be shorter because instead of 136, it will now become 136 plus five, that is 141. So uh, another five will be deducted here, and it will be 82 instead of 87. Okay, 82 instead of 87. The cash conversion cycle will become 82 instead of 87. So, as a result, what will happen? Ultimately, you will get 17.5 million dollar more short term financing from the suppliers and your operation will not need the total of 0.92 billion. Rather, what you will need is 0.92 billion minus 17.5 million. So, your total amount of resources necessary for one cash conversion cycle will reduce. Okay? So, clearly increasing the uh, accounts payable period or average payment period sorry increasing the average payment period will actually you know uh, actually help your company until and unless it damages your credit rating. So, uh, you have to be careful about that you know you, you cannot calculate the impact on your credibility uh, directly in this way, but you should keep an eye on that and if you can make sure that your credit rating is not being damaged then of course, increasing the average payment period will always help you to reduce the total resources needed for your for completing your uh, operations okay, for every cash, cash conversion cycle. Thank you very much.